Ever since Unity was released, threading code was always a challenge. A numerous amount of functions and features of the engine would be restricted only to the main thread which would lead to games having some performance issues. This would eventually be solved when Unity released their job system. The job system is Unity's own solution for multi-threaded code. In this series, I will go over the three main job systems that you can use to bring out your game's full potential. For this episode, I will be covering the basic iJob interface, so let's get started. Alright, so before we get started with anything, we first have to install the job system package. So let's go to your package manager, and I already have this uh, showing up, but if you want to see preview packages, you have to go into your advanced project settings and enable preview packages. So now once you have that ready, you can search for the jobs package and you hit install and you just wait. Alright, once the job system package is finished installing, we can now get into the main premise of this video, which is using the job system to make your games faster. So I have a script here, iJob tutorial, and inside it has a very expensive calculation over here. It iterates over a hundred thousand times doing this abomination. You'll probably not be doing this, but this is mainly a demonstration. And if we run the game that I have right now and look at the stats, we have a very bad frame rate. Right, 54 FPS, that's not too good. So we can improve this by using the job system. And to create a job system, you have to do it using Unity a jobs. And above the class that you want to have your job system, you're going to do a public struct. Job systems uh, mainly use structs as their like base for everything. So. Uh, I'm going to call this um, expensive calculation. And this is where we inherit it from iJob. There is iJob4 and iJob Parallel 4 Transform. And that is going to be handled in the next video, which will be used to make this calculation even faster. So now we have it all set up. We can now move this calculation, move your calculation into the execute function. Make sure that what you're calculating is thread safe, meaning that it does not use any unity, like um, internal unity methods like transform.position, animator.set, bool, set float, set parameter, anything that has to do with any built-in unity components. And now that we have our calculation in here, we want to have our job communicate the output to our to our um, main class. So to do that, we're going to use a native container. And native containers, like native arrays and native lists, are data are data structures that are used to allow the worker threads in Unity to communicate with the main threads. So we're going to create a native public native array of float, and this comes off of the unity.collections namespace. And once we have this ready, we can name this. I'm just going to call this um, uh, value. And over here, we can do value zero equals this. Now our job is already complete. We already have our, we have our native array to get our output, and we have the calculation that will be run to assign our output. Now to create the job and run it, we're going to create a job handle. And what that is, is what will be used to run the job and ensure that the job that we created will be completed. So first we're going to need to create an instance of our expensive calculation job. So I'll call this um, job, just call it job. And then new, you know, creating the usual initializing a struct and in here we're going to assign our value so up top we're going to make a native array of a float and we're going to call this our val um underscore value <laughs> and we're going to this is going to be a new native array of float and inside of here we're only going to need a length of one and for our allocator we're going to be using a temp job there are multiple allocators they can use there's temp persistent and all of that is mainly dependent on your situation. Like if you want to keep data for multiple frames, 
then you'd use persistent. But if you don't, then you're just using it for a single job, then use temp job. Now we're going to assign the value in here to our underscore value that we have made. And we're going to create our job handle now. So we're going to do job handle j handle equals job dot schedule. And after that, we can do j handle dot complete. And this function will ensure that the job that you created will be completed. And now after it is completed, we are going to want to get our output. So what we're going to do is job dot value zero. And that and we're getting our output from the job after it has been completed. So it's gonna do this fancy calculation and then it's going to spit out this value. And we can just debug.log it for now. Debug.log it. And every time you use a native container, like a native array or native list, when you're done using it, uh, in my case, I'm done using it because I, I use the job. I, I ran the job and I don't need this container anymore. You have to manually dispose of these variables. It, it is not handled by the garbage collection you have to manually dispose it. It's not automatically deallocated. So this is how you create a simple job handle and you how you run it. You created, so you create an instance of your job, you assign the variables that you create up here above it, and then you create a job handle that you will call for it to be completed. And after it completes, you can take any values you need that were modified within the job and then you dispose any of the native containers or native arrays that you created for the job to use. All right, so now if we go back into the Unity scene and we run it and we check our frame rate, you may notice nothing really has changed. And the reason why is because the job system is not some magic method to make your frame rate go sky high. It is simply a method in Unity to do multiple things at once. And that is where it excels. So let's say you have to calculate um, the position of this and the time of that. Like that's an example. You have to subtract time from some from multiple objects, and you have to get the position or move the position of another object. And that is where you can use the job system because instead of doing one from the other, you can do them in parallel or at the same time. So to kind of display this. Instead of doing just one job per frame, we can do four jobs per frame. So we're gonna have to create a native list of job handles and we'll call these jobs. And this will be a new native list of job handles, allocator.temp. And we're gonna create uh, four jobs. Let's do four jobs. We're in i to zero i is less than, is less than four i plus plus. And what we are going to do is we're just going to get rid of this. We don't really need this. So we can get rid of that. And that. So now what we're going to do is jobs dot add new job handle. And wait, no, not new job handle. Uh, it's going to be new expensive calculation. Oh expensive calculation dot schedule and that will return a job handle now right after we're done creating the jobs we're going to do job uh, no, job handle dot complete all and then we're going to pass in our list of jobs so it's going to complete all of the jobs that we created at once and to compare this to like another like the main thread how the main thread would do it Let's create a bool, and it's going to be a use job system. And if use job system, then we'll put this in. Otherwise, we'll just do the regular old calculation in a for loop on the main thread. Got to put this in. All right, now if we run it, it's going to be pretty bad, 13 FPS. But if we use the job system, you can see a performance boost. That is because now if we go into our profiler and we like select a little point like right over here, then you can see in our jobs, 
you can see the expensive calculation being run on multiple threads. But if we turn off use job system and we let it run again and then you know pause it and then go here, you can see this long, 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 long thread for just for the update function. And that is because it is running one at a time. It is running this calculation one at a time for a hundred thousand times. And but the job system it you know put uh, splits the workload among different threads here because we are running this a hundred thousand times but it's on different threads and not on the same thread so we're not doing four hundred thousand on the same thread on our main thread we're instead doing a hundred thousand on multiple different threads so it can be completed faster and that is how you use the Unity job system, the basic iJob interface. And the next video, I'm going to be going over a way to make this faster, to make this, to make um, this a bit faster, like a tad bit faster, using iJob Parallel 4 or iJob 4, which is the more up-to-date version. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next video.